David Dispanat and I'm with Media Unlocked and I'm coming at you with another tutorial and today's tutorial will be on Aperture, um, the newest version of it, 3.0 and uh, I have really really liked it. I think it's an excellent photo cataloging software. Uh, Lightroom and Bridge are some other ones but I really really think Aperture is the way to go. Uh, Aperture 2 wasn't nearly I think as, as good or as advanced as Aperture 3 and uh, I think Lightroom might have been better um, back in the day but I think the new Aperture is really really dumb. They've really done a lot of good updates and made it quite quite a good good piece of software. So what we're going to start out with today is um, importing. So uh, I have an SD card hooked up to my computer right now and these are some photos that I did for a real estate company a couple weeks back and uh, so mainly what you would do is you go up to import and then if you have numerous things hooked up you can pick what you want to import from uh, it will show you your photos and uh, I have them um, all checked and over here on the right you can there's all kinds of information um, there's so many import settings that you can do uh, and I th I have a few clicked the way I want it set up but you can add a name another one is your matted metadata um, information um, so all my photos will be stamped with this information so it is hard to copyright my photos it's pretty much impossible to copyright my photos which is awesome um, then I would import them and uh, they would become what's called a project which would pop under projects and albums um, so uh, we will go back out of importing and we will jump over to projects and albums and explain that so a little bit to you uh, so we will open up uh, models and uh, and so these are projects as you can see right here and then within the projects the folders the projects are within the folders and this is an excellent way to uh, categorize your photos and uh, stuff but um, if you just want to see all your projects because it's very similar to iPhoto with way more advancements in my opinion um, it's got a very similar interface as you can see as like iPhoto would here on a Mac but the advancements that this thing has blows iPhoto you know of course out of the water so they took the uh, the great interface and turned it into a great piece of software so now you can see all your projects here if you uh, they're all dated so these are all the projects that I have on this Aperture library and then if you want to see all your photos you can literally um, pop open all your photos and you can see photos like and you can see all your photos um, and I have it set by date so that would be my oldest photo and then all the way down to my newest photo way at the bottom um, so that's kinda how you set up your projects and albums um, and I really like this system it's great so if I know I want to pull out a motto photo a model photo I can just go right into there and pull it up so next I want to jump into is a little bit about the editing so let's pull up a photo of a model and uh, this is a photo we did on the beach down in Virginia Beach um, as you can see the lighting on her face isn't as good as I wanted on this shot but it doesn't really matter because I'm just showing you guys a little bit about see so what you want to do is you pop up to the far left corner and go over to adjustments now you can see your histogram and uh, what the photo was shot at and then you can go in and do what I what I really I just call it basic editing. Um, you do have the ability to do a lot more than basic editing, but but this is uh, this is kind of the way I like to do it because every photo I have is very different. Oh, another thing when you import your photos that you can do is you can actually set your adjustments up ahead of time. So when you import every single photo, it will add that adjustment. It's called actions, and uh, you can pretty much set it up so every photo coming in is going to be edited the same way. So if you have like a a certain uh, certain way that you like to edit your photos or there's just a basic touch like you might do some type of sharpening thing on every single one of your photos it will go on and just do that for you so that you don't have to do it on each and every photo when imported it will just do that for you which is absolutely great um, so um, one thing I really like is this thing called a definition um, I use it but it does of course it's not gonna look good for this photo um, but you can go in and, and, and brighten up your photos um, darken them up however you want and uh, this also does raw, which is great. Aperture does do raw, so you can edit your raw photos. And then you have all this other, um, some some of the very basic stuff that people use um, right here. So I, I really consider this um, editing software in Aperture to be basic editing. It's pre-editing before you send it to Photoshop. So, and it's much faster than Photoshop in my opinion. So, and do your basic edits. And then once you're done editing the way you want your shot to look like, say, you can right-click on the shot and click Edit, uh, edit with Photoshop and it will shoot it over to Photoshop which is great but before you can actually do that 
uh, you have to set that up. So what you want to do is go to the far left corner, click on Aperture, then click on Preferences, click on Export, and you can go in here and you can actually add in the information right here. So, um, so say you wanted Photoshop CS5, that's what I'm using. Um, I would scroll down to Photoshop CS5, and that's what I would export with. And then I can export it as an 8-bit TIFF or 8-bit PSD, um, and I like to keep it as a TIFF when I export at 300 DPI, and uh, which is really nice. So, and it has there's a bunch of other settings, and I'll go over that in a, in a future tutorial. Um, and then another thing you can do is um, you can actually set up um, exporting your video. Um, I kind of feel like an idiot because there it is, uh, external audio, external video editor. So if I, you can actually catalog all your videos right here in Aperture as well, and I actually don't use it at all for my video, but I'll go on and set this up anyways because I use Final Cut Pro. So I'll set it up so that all my videos when I export them will go straight to Final Cut Pro, which is really nice. And uh, so if you want to, if you do photos and video, you just do video. Um, you can catalog um, your videos right here. I don't think I don't see. I do have one one video. Um, I have a couple videos on here, and you can catalog them, watch them, and then right click, and it will send them to Final Cut Pro, as you can see, which is really nice. So these are some really basic um, things that you can do with Aperture. Uh, these are pretty much kind of my process. Um, I pretty much import, find the photos I like, um, go into adjustments, edit them, right click, send them into Photoshop, do the final edits, and then I will set up a photo probably on my desktop, which I will drop them in there and then they will get sent into an external um, hard drive as an edited file. But you can also send them right back into um, Aperture if you want. Uh, I do that sometimes. It just depends. Uh, Aperture is kind of just a where I put all my unedited photos really, and uh, and then I edit them and send them. I have other other ways that I like to have my workflow set up, but Aperture is just a nice interface that I can kind of see everything that I've got going on. So, anyways, um, again, my name is David Spnat with Media Unlocked. Um, check us out on Twitter or uh, Facebook. Links will be in the pants bar down below. And I appreciate you guys stopping by and checking out my tutorial. If you have any questions or you'd like to see another tutorial, um, I don't know if there's some video editors out there. I use Final Cut Pro. I use Aperture. I use CS5. Um, so if there's anything that you'd like to see from those three softwares, I'd be more than happy to show you. Or some kind of photo technique or anything like that. Uh, I'm always more than happy to show off the what skills I have. That's what I'm here for. That's why I'm putting these videos up is to show you what little knowledge I have and give it to you guys. Um, there are quite a few people I like to watch. Um, you should check out. Don Bauer, uh, photography, Nikon photographer out of, I believe, London. Great photographer, wonderful tutorials. And another one is called uh, John Poland Photo, Fro Knows Photo. I don't know if you guys have heard of him. I'm going to put both of their links down in the link bar below. So if you guys want to check out some two really great photographers that do an excellent job of giving you, uh, you know, hands-on tutorials, they actually take you out in the field with them and show you step-by-step. -step. I get a lot of ideas from them because um, by no means am I a top-notch professional photographer. I'm very much on the low end, but I'm trying to move up in the world of photography and videography. So thank you very much, and you have a wonderful day.